Okay, so next we have Michaela Karen. She is an iOS engineer at Lickability and also a YouTuber. Uh, and she's going to be talking about um, deploying onto Fly IO. <laughs> My bad. Okay, yes. Awesome. Okay, hey everybody, let's make Vapor Fly. So first off, like Tim said, my name is Michaela Karen. I am an iOS engineer at a company called Lickability. We are a fully remote software studio, so if you need an iOS app, let me know. And I also do freelance work, and I'm an, one of the organizers of iOS Dev Happy Hour, which is a monthly online meetup. And I'm a content creator, so I am on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Basically, I'm on my phone all the time. So we are here about vapor development. It's pretty simple, right? You develop your app and then you deploy it. That's it. So we will talk about the deployment side right now and we will be deploying to a platform called fly.io. So first off, what is fly? It describes themselves as deploy app servers close to your users. And they are a company that ha is headquartered in Chicago, but most of their team is actually fully remote. And they use a service called Firecracker Micro VMs. So first, Firecracker is a software that is developed by AWS, and it is an open source virtualization software. And it, create, it creates and manages micro VMs. So you have a normal VM, a virtual machine. So as if you just picked up your computer, put it like made it virtual, and you can run it anywhere. That's a virtual machine. A micro VM is then more lightweight and it has faster startup times and lower overhead. And why would we use fly.io as a platform uh, for server-side Swift? Honestly, at first, on August 25th of this year, Heroku was like, we're gonna get rid of our free plan and everybody's like, oh no, where can I deploy now for free? So that was the first of where I had heard about fly.io. And then after looking into it, it's really cool because you can uh, easily deploy any Docker file. And with Vapor, we automatically get a Docker file created for us. And also looking into it further, it works with seven different databases. There are Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, SQLite, and then a couple others. So let's talk about Docker. First, what is it? Docker is a platform designed to help developers build, share, and run modern applications. So basically, we package up everything we actually need to create our app, and then we can put it anywhere to run it. And with that, we have to talk about two important files that Docker uses. We have what is called just a Docker file. So this is a single text file. It doesn't even have a file extension. They just call it a Docker file. And this is used to build the image of your Dockerized app. So this includes things like your app's executable and any dependencies that you may need. The other file is called the Docker Compose file. And this is a YAML file, which is just a, it's also just the text file, honestly, but it's how you format it for like different settings. And this tells you how to build multiple services and how they relate to each other. And something I thought was interesting with Fly when I was doing deployment was that your machine that is created is actually not running Docker itself. They only use Docker to go about creating that micro VM, but it's not actually residing on the VM itself. So we're gonna start with a Vapor app. We are going to be using the normal to do um, Hello World application. And for this, okay, sorry, I just want to check what was up there. Um, and for this example, we are going to be choosing Postgres as our database that we use. So we first type vapor new, hello, and you'll see the number three everywhere because you know I had to create this multiple different times. But once we do that, we'll have vapor up and running. To get started, we use fly control, their command line utility. So we can easily use Homebrew to install it with brew install fly CTL. And yeah, that font is gonna be gigantic, by the way. Um, the second thing we do is we have to sign up for an account. So we have fly auth sign up. And for all of the commands, it's interesting. You can type fly rather than fly CTL for pretty much everything. If you already do have an account, we can um, easily log in using fly auth login. And this will open a web browser to sign in with GitHub, or you can use, um, just completely forgot what it was. It, you can sign up with GitHub or I think just your email actually. 
So let's get started writing a bunch of commands that you will forget after this talk. So the first thing we have to do is make sure we are in the proper directory. We want to make sure we're in the directory with our Docker file. So we can check that with uh, ls. Yeah, that's like gigantic. And after we do that, we type fly launch. And this creates the command itself, or sorry, it creates the app itself inside of Fly's platform. Oh, we, sorry, we go about uh, naming the project and then choosing what region do we want to deploy from. And this is something we can also change later. And a thing to note is when you create your the name of your application, this is going to be the subdomain that is used by default when it's deployed on Fly's platform. So the URL that will get created for mine will be hello fly vapor 3 Doing that, and then um, after we select a region, it creates the fly.toml file, which toml and yaml, they're basically also still the same things. It's different ways to format text for creating different settings. We are going to select yes to set up our database right now, and then we choose which kind of configuration that we want to have. When we hit enter, it goes through and starts creating everything for us. And you can see, as it keeps on going through, we create our database and it gives us all of the secrets right there. And we've created the app and we've created the database. And it, somewhere one of those lines at the bottom you'll read, it attaches the app to the database so we don't actually have to do that ourselves. We're gonna select no for using Upstash Redis at the moment to make everything pretty simple. And then we're actually going to select no for deploying it right now because we can always deploy it later. So what we did was really go about creating the actual Fly application. So if we were to go to the web, site, the web dashboard that they have, that's also very bright, yeah, is the first thing we see is the database and that has a check marks because the Postgres instance has been created, but all of our tables and everything have not yet. We see hello Fly Vapor 3, which that is the app application itself has been created in Fly, but what's on it is like still blank. Like it's just like it's been made, but nothing is actually there yet because we have not deployed it. And then lastly, we see what is called their remote builders. This is like the machine they use to go about building our application using Docker. So now let's deploy. It's super simple. We just type fly deploy and then it goes through and figures out um, it figures out what remote builder we want to use and then goes through the Docker file and starts compiling everything like line by line. And as you can see, I sped the video up a bunch because in reality, this took about five minutes from a complete brand new application to get up and running um, when I actually created it um, in my home state in Indiana in the USA. But then the server that I'm deploying to is actually over here in London. So it goes through, there we go. Everything is pushed, and then we see at the very bottom, it will tell us v0 deployed successfully. So we can go back to our application dashboard, and we see green check marks across the board. Everything is up and running, and everything is healthy. We can also check by going to the actual app that we just deployed. If you can see the URL, it's hello fly uh, vapor 3, and we get hello vapor on the root endpoint. And then if we use the slash hello endpoint, we just get your normal hello world. But now if we try to go to slash to do's, we get an issue. It gives you, can you even see that? That's still really big. Um, I was worried for a minute. It says just something wrong. Um, yeah, error true. The reason for all of that is of course, because we haven't run our migration. So the database instance exists, but none of our tables exist. So what we have to do is go back over to Xcode and type the uh, inside of our configure function, we have try app.automigrate and wait for that. But also we see we have to set up the database and all of these secrets that are here. We have to read from those and we haven't done that at all yet. So we have to start adding our secrets. The first thing we want to do to add secrets is just list out what secrets do we have. We have the database URL because that was created automatically for us when we created the database at the same time that we that we created the fly app. If we would have created it at a separate point in time, we would have had to add this manually. But for the sake of this demo, we created them both at the same time and it's easier. So to add an actual secret, you just type fly secrets set and then whatever you want your secret name to be and then equal to 
whatever you want that value to be. So for us, it's HelloFly Vapor 3. And we can see this from this secrets that was listed when we did the fly launch command initially. And every time you add a new secret, it will go through and deploy a new version of your application. So we have here v1 deployed because we just deployed again for the new secrets. But we don't actually have to add all of them individually one by one because that's kind of obnoxious. So we can actually add several of them at once using uh, the same command fly secret set. But instead of just typing one key value pair, we start typing another key value pair. So we go through right now, we are adding the database username, which is Postgres, and the password, which this also came from that secrets file that we saw earlier. And then it goes ahead and deploys a new version again. Once we have everything, we can see fly secrets list again and make sure do we have everything we need. But we are still forgetting one very important one that is obvious, but I forgot to do this and it like, that's how debugging was like super hard. It took me like two hours to remember I didn't put in the database name. It can't connect to the database when it doesn't know which database it is. So we have to go and find what that value is. Because the database has launched by fly, it's not our default like vapor underscore database that comes with the Hello World app. So we type fly pg connect and dash a is which app we're connecting to. Instead of pg, you could also just type fly postgres, but that's the shorthand. And then now we are actually in our database um, application that's running on Fly's platform. So we can see the, the Postgres console and start typing backslash L to get into uh, the list of databases that are available. So we see the one that's created is hello fly vapor three with underscores this time rather than hyphens. We see the value, we can type uh, backslash Q to get out of that console. And then again, it's just adding one more secret. So we go through, type fly secrets set database name, and then we just add the database name that we just found. And of course, it goes and deploys a new version again. And you may see a discrepancy in numbers here and there because I did this multiple different times. But then also, we are writing the secrets, but you can also like uh, delete them as well. So now that we've done that, we changed our Vapor code, so we have to deploy again. We start with fly deploy, and we have everything. It's got to go build our Docker file, and we are hoping for the best that everything always deploys and always works the first time because that is exactly how software development works. But unfortunately, as always, we come across some kind of error. Maybe. There we go. We come across some kind of error. So we see it just says failed due to unhealthy allocations. It's rolling back version three and deploying that as version five. So it is keeping track of which versions you're on so you can always look back in your code and know what happened. So if we scrolled up internal, we could see what, what is going on, but we can also see this in the dashboard. If we click on the app itself and then click on monitoring over on the left, we see some kind of error showing up. So I made this even bigger. Um, it just says password authentication failed for user Postgres. And what happened was typing is difficult and I typed the password wrong. So if we go back uh, into terminal, we try again, just type fly secrets set database password. I'm trying to type the right one this time, but you can again, set your secrets. Um, this will just overwrite what was previously there, or you can actually use the command unset to unset the value and then add a new one if you wanted to do that but it's going to then deploy twice rather than just deploying once when we overwrite it. We have done that. Now let's try deploying again. So we type fly deploy. Everything goes and compiles again. And then uh, in the end, we finally get v7 deployed successfully. To check this, we can use Postman, which is used to uh, run any kind of HTTP, HTTP and a bunch of other network requests. We can type in the URL of our application and I'm sending a post request to create a new to-do object. So let's see, fly.io works. Uh, once I hit send, we get back a 200 response uh, with the object. So we have deployed successfully. We can also go back over to a normal web browser. Check, we, we got back the title object. So that means good, everything is working. 
and we have successfully deployed to fly in about the last 20 minutes. But let's recap, because all we did was just write a bunch of terminal commands. So what really happened was first thing we had to do was download fly control, and we did that using Homebrew, the package manager. We just type fly launch to create our application itself and put it onto uh, fly's platform. We had to configure the environment variables and type everything correctly. This is the most important step. Once we do that, we just type fly deploy and everything is up and running using the Docker file that's created. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Great. Have we got any questions for my That's so big. No questions for anyone? There we go. I'm Michaela. Um, how would I go about uh, scaling uh, my app deployed in Fly? So you can scale vertically, um, mainly because you can choose all the different kind of configurations that you have. Um, I believe you can also scale uh, horizontally, but it starts then you'll start getting into conf uh, configuring everything and connecting it all together. Hello, thank you for your talk. Um, I've got a question about money. Uh, <laughs> so you have a kind of free plan, right? Yes. And um, what Heroku showed us is that you shouldn't trust it. So should we trust Fly? For how long? Do you have some guarantees, whatever? I mean, for, for a business, it's not an issue, right? Because mm -hmm. you can pay. But for small companies, for, I know, some startups, for, I know, podcasts, some blog posts, et cetera, to, to write blog posts, et cetera, to support your infrastructure, you need some free plan. Do you have some guarantees? I would say you would trust it as much as you would trust any other third party. So it's up to, it's up to you with the developer answer of it depends on how much you want to trust different platforms. So they do have this open right now. Heroku took theirs down, I believe, to possibly prevent spam, but then also a bunch of things that were just like on there, but like are never used. Um, so I would say it's definitely an up to you kind of decision because yeah, if you really want like complete guarantee, it's always you have to like roll your own, but whether or not you really want to do that, uh, is yeah definitely up to your own discretion. Hey, thank you. That was super cool. Um, just one follow up. It, did I understand it correctly? That essentially it's like a box down a vapor app. So you could have like previous like you could deploy pretty much the same thing at Heroku with like very minor changes, right? So yes, that could kind of serve as. Yep, and they even have a migration tool that you can like take your Heroku app and move it onto Fly's platform. Oh, that's pretty cool. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, so I have a question about the add-on sort of ecosystem. So Heroku has quite a you know, comprehensive add-on um, items. So how does that compare to Fly.io? I would say this one is a lot more lightweight because it's more of the way that it's structured is all of the docs are about like web interfaces. Like there's actually nothing on there about how to use Vapor. They just mentioned that if you have Docker and you can configure your Docker file properly, you can deploy onto their platform. So it's it's definitely a little bit different of there's not as much of like a whole ecosystem around it. And it's more like on the website. I know there's a PR up right now on the Vapor docs for implementing uh, or deploying to Fly, but um, add-ons and everything else, it's really kind of like, if you know how to do it, you can definitely do it. But making it easier is like still a little bit of, they're trying to like give you the power to really configure it exactly how you want. Suckle hint for me there to repeat the PR. Um, <laughs> anyone else got any other questions? Cool, thank you very much. Thank you.